Hi, happy Tuesday, not Monday, like I thought it was. Um, I am- <laughs> I keep having to say it. Seriously, I'm like, oh, this is gonna mess me up all week. Um, <laughs> I'm here with Liz. A lot of you guys know her, and if you know her, you love her. because She is just a ball of wonderful energy and positivity. And I wanted to bring her on for a photographer feature because she's just amazing. Um, but we'll get to our topic in a minute. Um, <laughs> we first met last year at Conference 12 and bonded over the fact that we both have our oldest, I mean, my kids are much older than hers because I'm much older <laughs> than she is. <laughs> my, both of our oldest sons have autism and then we both have twins, like boom, boom. And so, and then she's a breadwinner and many, many years I've been a breadwinner especially this year. So um, we have a lot in common and she was in my mastermind and we got really close and I missed her face. So I wanted her to come on and talk to you guys and share a little bit about who she is and what she does and talk about what's really important. Like, cause you know, we're more than just our businesses. Like because we run these boutique businesses, everything tends to be intertwined and how that works and how to find balance and what drives you to keep going. So I'm going to let her tell you guys a little bit more about who she is and where she's from, what she does. Hi, guys. What's up? What's up, <laughs> howdy? Thanks first, Brene, for having me on. I love you so of much. Course. You're like oh, the best, amazing woman. Um, so my name's Liz. Uh, my business is Elizabeth Ann Photography, although I never really go by Elizabeth. Um, it was just like, this name's not taken and I can <laughs> For my business and that's how that started <laughs> i think that's like how pretty much everybody's like i don't have a name we're just going with my name because i don't have a yeah. creative way so yeah. anywho um i have been doing this well so i actually started having fun with photography in high school for fun i was like let me take my bestie out let's go take photos all the things yep. Um, and then my senior photographer noticed that I like to post pictures, which now I look back and I'm like, oh. <laughs> don't we all though? That's just the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over edit with like picnic or whatever it was at the time. Oh my God. Um, totally. Yeah. Mm. So she was like, Hey, I know she have a creative eye. Would you be interested in being an assistant for me? Started working for her as an assistant five years later. Um, she was mainly, um, a wedding photographer so I photographed weddings for oh I, I was assisting for three years and then I photographed weddings for a couple more years and then I decided I'm time it's time to jump ship and do this on my own and in between all that I worked at several jobs I went to college not for photography because I didn't realize this was <laughs> going to be a thing until I realized I loved it more and more and here we are now I'm photographing all the things but actually only yeah. seniors because I love them they are right to so, uh, and so I've been doing that. So technically I've been doing this for 10, a little 10 plus years, a while. It's been a little, okay. at least yeah. a while for me. Yeah. Cause I'm a baby. baby. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Um, I photographed weddings for a long time. I loved them, but my heart kind of changed after photographing. Thing, Same. seniors and it wasn't just because I loved seniors because they're amazing they are actually when I first photographed seniors I didn't like I didn't like them really I'm like they're really and this is just too much for me. <laughs> even though I'm extra as like if anybody knows me I'm like this is extra normal extra people and then I'm up here for like oh it's Liz I'm a little crazy yeah. but um <laughs> I started to get into it and realized well it kind of all changed after Tristan. So my oldest, which mm -hmm. we both have talked about, and she, she uh, mentioned my oldest is autistic. When he was diagnosed, um, things changed. I changed as a person. Yeah. And that's that to you. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's kind of insane um, uh -huh. because I am not the same person I was when my son was diagnosed. Not the same person whatsoever. Uh, totally. I had to change how I felt about hopes and dreams mm -hmm. and in a way of not dreaming, not having a vision of like, this is how it has to be, but being more open and realizing like when someone loves what they do or they love something in particular, that's what's important. Not what you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, I also started to love myself more. I 
did not like who I was as a person <laughs> and physically, mentally, all the things. And I started to realize that I didn't want my kid to grow up and, and feel like he has to change who he is just because he doesn't fit society standards. Mm. And yeah. that also got me into seniors because I started photographing these girls and I'm like, crap, you need to hear this too. You are yeah. amazing. You are loved. You are beautiful. And you are quirky. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's such an astounding thing. So I started to change myself and, and show the world, like, this is me. Hi. Like, if you don't like me, that's fine. You don't have to hang out with me. But my crew will. That does want to hang out with me. And um, I started doing teaching that to my seniors as well. And my business flourished. And now I'm photographing only high school seniors. And here we are. Yeah, and so, see, that's story. the key right there. That's the key right there. And that's what a lot of people, I think, don't get or don't really pay enough attention to, I think. And, and I think that you did it without knowing you were doing it, obviously, right? But yeah. by being so completely authentically yourself and tapping into like, you knew like, okay, this is who I am. You attracted your true target client. And so the more you did that, then the more it fed you and vice versa. And it was like this, this cycle. That's what so many people don't understand. They're like, I can't reach people. I don't know how to reach them. It's all about knowing who you're talking to. And by you really being changing that perspective and, and like, like you said, just being authentically you, putting it out there. Yeah, you're not going to be for everybody. That's the whole point. You don't yeah. want to market to everybody. You want that boutique business is, is about that, that niche, you know, and you, you were able to find it. And then they, they were like, what is up with this? Like, who is that? And so it's almost like, you know, it's almost polarizing in a way. Right. But man, it helps you hone in really fast on who you're well, talking to. It's right? like, if you just target, if you don't, sometimes people overthink it. And you think like, I have to do this. I have to do that. But when you clear out all the clutter, you clear out what yes. everybody else is doing yes. and you look at yourself and you say like, what can I give this world? What, yep. what is so important inside that I'm passionate about that I can deliver to this world. And then you show up authentically, just sharing that you're going to find your people. Like, yes. you're going to find across the board. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Like, so stop overthinking about it. Stop freaking out of like, I have to do it this way, this way, this way. Step or like back. everybody else. That's what you, that's the main thing. Like you hit the nail on the head and you know, like our clients, yeah, our clients have a lot of similar values. They're like the same generation. That's what we talk. I talk about all the time in marketing, yeah. but your clients are different than mine. If yeah. I started trying to market to your clients, they wouldn't, they wouldn't respond the same way that they respond to you. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's a side note. I just wanted to mention that because it was something that is super important and that you're super good at. And even if like a lot of people, I think a lot of people do kind of do that and they're like, I don't even know how I did it. I just did it. Well, that's how. <laughs> so anyway, then, so you now specialize in seniors and you have not stopped. Like COVID has not, like you've gotten busier, I think. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I keep raising my prices because I'm like, yep. I need to slow down, but it, it doesn't happen. I just keep getting busier and I'm like, well, this is good. But at the same time, like what's happening? I thought that I hit the line, the border and I just keep having to raise it, which is not a bad thing. I'm like super excited about it. No, but at the same time, it's not it's a like, bad thing. It's, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Yes. Really it does. Yes. And it makes me excited because this area is not like a very high priced area, but I'm raising the bar for photographers. Around go. this area to bring up their price, and that's awesome. Like, I'm so it excited is. about that, and I hope it that is. I'm encouraging other people to raise their prices in this area. That way, we can make more money and take care of our family. So, exactly, that's and that's so. important to you because you are the breadwinner. Like, that's yeah. you know, and and talk to us a little bit about that because you do. Like, how old are your kids? <laughs> Okay, so I have my four year old um, son, and then my twins are. 17 months old now. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I have a girl. So basically boy. exactly how we did it. Like two, are they two years apart? They're three and a half years. Three and a half. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. close. Yes. And it's, uh, 
it's fun. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you like, will be caught like eating ice cream just literally by the fridge as the doors open and crying at night. Like that happens. That's a thing sometimes because. Oh yeah. It was the know? closet for me. I would go cry in my closet all the time, all oh, the time. Oh, oh guys, it's like, there is no shame because motherhood no. is so difficult and running a business in motherhood is also like no joke no joke crazy and you know it's so like it's crazy because when i first had tristan i had a hard time finding moms that were just starting in their business um and had kids that age and on top of that at that time i didn't know he was autistic so i'm like mm -hmm. why is this so hard? Why is this so hard? <laughs> like, and no one, I can't find anyone that's going through this right now. And um, so, ah, yeah. it was a little yeah. crazy, but you know, here we are. You do it, you do it, <laughs> we you do it. it and people always probably tell you, I don't know how you do it. And you're like, I ain't got no choice. Yeah, like, like I no, just have to do no. it. You're like, I just do it. <laughs> All the things and I'm like, not really. No, I, you just make it work. And people always, they always say like, I could never do that. You know what? I, I had a friend that her son was diagnosed with autism and I said, oh my gosh, no. I told my friend, I'm like, I could never do this. And I'm just, I am admire you. And then I found out like six months later and then twins, I had a friend who had, was pregnant with twins. I'm like, props to you, babe. Cause that's not happened to me. And four months later, here we are. So never say never. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and don't say like, I can't do this because nine times out of 10, you can, you can, yeah. you just, yeah. you got to push yourself in this situation and just go and go yeah. and do it. You make yeah. it work. So what is, okay. So as far as like, you know, our topic kind of today, we want to talk about like what's driving you and your business. And, and I think that's a really important thing because so many people and especially moms, um, like you said, we get it's really hard to differentiate sometimes because everything is just like, we do everything. We tend to be the all encompassing Oz. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we're like, I do everything. I, I run the checkbook. I run the house. I run the kids. I run the business. I buy the groceries. I do this. I do. And as we know, um, yeah, you can do it all, but just not at the same time if you want to have any kind of mental health. So what are the things, what are some of the things that you've done or seen or like kind of experienced that helps you like either outsource, you know, like what are the things that you have to do to make sure you're both a good mom and present and also a great business owner? Like, what do you find that balance when you're like, I feel like, so I've been doing the whole breadwinner thing for a year. And even past that, I, my husband was working full time before that. And I was working full time. And over the year, I feel like I learned a hove of new things, like just a trove. Yeah. And, um, one thing for me is definitely having two days off. I have to have two days off a week to spend with my kids. Otherwise I feel guilty. And the thing is it blows my mind because we have mom guilt so bad. I mean, like yes. it's just a thing. It's a thing, but this is the way I look at it. If you are concentrating on your business, when you are at your business, nothing else, your kids cannot be in your mind. You are dedicating time to your business. You can't feel guilty about that. When you're with your kids, you focus on, on your kids. Yep. You don't spend time on your business and you focus on that. And intentionality has been like my biggest thing. So having those two days off and being intentional with my kids, that's important to me. When I am with my kids in the morning, that is my time with them. That is important to me. If I have an idea for like an Instagram or something, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this for two seconds while the kids are napping. Okay. I'm done. Save it. I will take care of it later. I'm not going to do it right now because I am harnessing on this right now. So intentional was the biggest thing for me um, yeah. so that I could put aside mom guilt and realize I am being intentional. I am taking care of my kids in a different way than full-time moms in a different way than certain moms, the way they work when they have a nine to five. Mine, it's not a nine to five. I have variable hours. Yes. Um, but if you're being intentional with your kids, then it's okay. That's it's what okay. matters. Exactly. That took me a long, it, it actually took me a while to get, like it really did. Um, and I remember, I don't remember who it was, but it was a long time ago. It might have been one of my therapists, probably, um, where I was, have, I was talking to her about this mom guilt. Not as my kids were still really little, you know, and Reese was having, um, you know, 25 plus hours of therapy in the house after he'd been at school all day and all the other extracurriculars. And I was 
PTA president. Like, what the hell was I freaking thinking? Like, I was just trying to do too much shit and, yeah. you know, be the best wife and be the best mom and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, build this business. I was still in like the beginning phases of building my business. So I had to teach myself business on top of everything else. Um, and I was flipping. And I remember her telling me that she's like, no, 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 no. You know, she's like, not only can you not just do it all at the same time. Yes. But she also told me, um, your kids, if you are intentional about your time with them, um, even though you're working because they see you working, you know, you're doing it from home. It's not like you have an office that you go to and drop them off at daycare every day. You're home with them, but you're not really present with them all the time. So that can also be super traumatic to kids to have a, someone who's present, but not present, right? Emotionally is you know, present, but just physically. So she's like intentionality. And she was talking to me about that. And she said, and your kids, if you are intentional about it and you make sure that the time that you do spend with them is quality, then they're going to see you when you're doing your work and understand that that is just, that's mom, that's mom doing work. It's not like she's leaving us. And it kind of just reframed that for me, like in the same way that you're talking about. And I think it's really important for people to understand that intentionality and perspective, like shift that perspective, right? Because if you go into it thinking I'm going to do everything and I have to do it all, you're going to run yourself right into the ground and your kids are going to be not okay, even though I'm home with them and I'm raising them. And no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So take that time for yourself. And I'm really glad that you figured that out when they were so young because it I took me a while. <laughs> yeah. I think it is, it's, it's one thing you're like, you have to remember this, but sometimes like it's hard because being a breadwinner, I get stressed. I mean, that's just, <laughs> Okay. Yes, like, trust me. It's not the same as like going and having a salary job because you have nine to five, you're guaranteed to be paid as long as you're not like stupid. Don't do something. We don't work. We don't make money. No, yeah, exactly. So, um, I am a, which I, you know, you're the same way. I'm a uh, Enneagram seven and I'm like, if I'm not moving forward, I'm moving backward. So sometimes I do constantly want to work. I'm like, but this is going to help my business. I have all these ideas. I'm like, let me do this 5 billion things. This is great. Um, and I have to like put myself in check. I have to remind myself and I'm like, girl, you need to slow down. You have three children over there that care for you and they need you to be there. And they yeah. also do need to see you being a responsible mom that is, you know, a business owner. They need to see those both sides. So intentionality, such a big thing for me and across Huge. the board. And Huge. I think, oh yeah. I think another thing for me, I'm starting to realize more and more too is taking care of your body, which I know to take care of your body, but eating healthy, nourishing your body. So you have the energy to do these type of things Girl. because yes, I'm busy, but like I started to get wound down and I'm like, I'm getting old. I, I know, Renee, I know, but I, <laughs> I'm like, don't I talk to me about old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting bogged One of down. will be 50 soon. And it's not you. you. As we, as we talked, you were like aging gracefully. I would never guess. Oh my gosh. You get flawless. Okay. Uh, so yes, taking care of your body, your mind and your soul and understanding yeah. this is so good. Oh gosh. Talking about body image, like taking care of your body, but also respecting your body at the place it's at now. Yes. Because we're all moms. Yes, we have stretch marks. Yes, we pushed out a kid. I had a C-section and I had, you know, two babies ripped out of my belly too. Yep, um, same. <laughs> so, uh, your body, it's, you're gorgeous, first off. You're gorgeous, yes, whether you are. Absolutely. And it's weird, you know, going in the hospital and coming out a completely different person and it's a different mm -hmm. mind mindset change, but that's also something that you need to dedicate to daily. Talking about yourself in a positive way because someone else is listening. Your kids are listening. Yep. Seniors are listening. And if you are not talking about these type of things to yourself, like that's damaging yourself and damaging the people around you. So that's actually a big part of self-care. Yeah. So side note. Huge. Yeah. And that's a really big part of your brand too. You know, I mean, and that's like what we talked about before is your clients and your clients are drawn to you because of that, because they do feel that from you. Um, and I think that's so important. I know that a lot of us in our industry, you know, we definitely want to infuse our businesses with that, but like you embody it really. And I love, I love that 
like, I mean, I am, I'm a lot older. And so, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have any of this like body positivity in mainstream media. I am so excited that my daughter who is, you know, 19 is, is really just like, she is learning to love her body in a completely different way than I did. And that just like, and it's not because of me, it's because of everything. It's, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yes, I hope that I had a part of it, but really we all have our own trauma, right? We all have our own stuff that we grow up in generational stuff. And I came from the generation of, you gotta be perfect. You gotta be everything, you know, you gotta be, you gotta have it all. Um, And so, yeah, I'm really glad that we're living in a time now where we're supported in, in social media, and it can still be really detrimental, but I, I really feel a shift and I see it with our clients. Don't you, with our young Gen oh Z God. clients, they're so it's on it, man. Big thing. It's such a big thing. And you know, I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm a mom and that's why I have this extra weight. And these seniors don't relate to that, but that's not true at all. Like <laughs> wait, yeah. we all feel like negative about ourselves at times, no matter what age you are and connecting that and talking about that. I talk about being a mom and those kind of things all the time, but my seniors love it because I'm connecting something that they feel deeply about. And that is what, that's what they need. And that is, is a big pusher and a drive for a business right now. It's not just like surface level things that that's not enough anymore. You need to talk about the deep stuff. You need to have those emotional connections. You need them to feel connected to you before they start working with you, because that's what gets them to the next step. That's what gets them to want to spend more money. But even then, even then that's a deeper purpose. You are taking care of these girls you were giving them a once in a lifetime experience of, yeah, they're going to get photos when they're, when they're married, but that's about two people. That's not about you. This is the one time in your life that you can feel, they can feel solely amazing amazing about themselves and going to college being like, yes, queen, I am gorgeous and I am stunning and I'm ready to take on the world. And this is what we need to give to girls. Absolutely. There's nothing better than that. When I hear parents tell me that, oh my gosh, you know, she didn't, my, you know, my, she was really leery about doing this and and I really wanted her to do it, but she's walking taller now. She has more confidence. I see it on her. That to me is everything. And, you know, it is, it can't be surface it has to be authentic because they will see right through all your bullshit, first of all. Um, And let's face it, nothing about what we do as boutique high-end senior portrait photographers is necessary. Nobody needs us. This is not something that somebody wakes up in the morning and goes, you know what, I have got to get professional photos done and spend $3,000 on them. Nobody says that. Like maybe a few people do, but really, it's not the way it is. It's our job to communicate that and our messaging and our branding and who we are as people, because we are our business. We are the, we are the face of our business. Even if your business is named something else and not your name, it doesn't matter. You still are like, if you're running a boutique business, it really is at a very deep level, authentically you and like what, what's driving that. So that why that, that script that you run, you know, all that stuff is so, so important. That's why it's so important to be on the top, like you said, of your physical and mental health, because if you're not, that's going to seep into everything else you do too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, absolutely. it's really tough to get out of that. So I highly encourage everybody to like, think about that. And I was actually thinking about that this morning because this whole men- the physical health that you were just talking about. I wish if I could go back in time, which I actually can with hypnosis, you can FYI, but that's a whole other topic. (laughs) Um, I have been doing some retroactive hypnosis, but if I could go back in time and do anything different, because mostly I wouldn't change anything. Obviously we're, you know, everything is the way it's supposed to be. And I truly believe that, but I, I, there was a period of time when I got super busy and the kids were super busy. Like, I think it was probably in like 2011, 2012 ish, it started getting really crazy for me. Um, they were preteens and my business was like, like crazy expanding and I wasn't prepped for it really, you know? Um, I, that's what I, that's what I put on the shelf was the health and boy, did I pay for it later. Like, so if there's anything that I hope like people kind of are able to hear is 
don't let that, don't let yourself get put on that back burner, whatever that looks like. And I'm not talking about you have to go to the gym every single day and work out till you're no. dying. Just move a little bit, take care of yourself, nourish yourself, love yourself where you are. That's so, so important. Yep. Oh man. I love it. I love it. I think that was like a big thing for me is I felt I'm like, I can drink all the coffee. I can be fine. I will take care of me later and I will take care of everybody else first. Yeah. But would you ever tell your kid, would you ever tell your child, <laughs> like, you don't need to take care of yourself right now. You need to do all these other things. Like, no, that's ridiculous. No. That's it's so stupid. So stupid. You have to think about those type of things. Don't think about yourself. Think about someone else and say like, would you tell that person that they look like a fat cow today? No. Okay. Then why are you telling yourself that, boo? No, oh, oh, wait a second. You shouldn't, should you? And it's the same thing across the board. Drink your water. Like, like, yes. Yes. Drink it, fill it up, drink it, take care of yourself. And, and realize that if you are not filling up your own cup, how can you overflow and fill into other people's cups and fill them up completely? Because when you are on running on empty, you can't really completely nope. fill someone else up. You can't give someone a full experience if you are running on empty. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. I get a little, I get mm, self-love. <laughs> I just, I have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I love that you talk about it. Okay. Well, I know that you've got a crazy busy day, so we'll probably wrap up in a second, but um, what else do you think? Okay. I wanted to touch on this for a second because of the kids and because, because we both had kids with special needs too. And I think this is relatable to everybody, not just special needs parents, because you do, do you find, <laughs> did you find yourself getting to a point um, yet where you're really selective about who you let in your life, right? And not just in like your business, but your personal life as well. Like, didn't that perspective change too? I don't know yeah. if it's a mom thing or a special needs mom thing or, or just getting older thing, but I kind of got to that place where I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I've got a lot going on here. I have to preserve the energy. I have to make sure you know, and it, it is kind of a little controlling because I am going to control freak, but I think this is, I think this is a positive way. Have you, have you done or felt that Absolutely. as well? Oh my gosh. I mean, so I think people have trigger moments. Some people it's, you know, having a child changes you, but I think, um, and some people don't have a trigger moment yet, but for me, it was definitely Tristan because after he was diagnosed, like right after he was diagnosed, I didn't have good friends. I had people that stopped talking to me, mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't do play dates because yep. it was like he was infectious, which made no sense whatsoever. I know. And my heart was just, I was in a, I was in a dark place. I was in a dark place. Same. Um, and it took me a little bit to climb out of it, but realizing as I was climbing out, like it took pros out for me. Him but <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, me too. Me too. Nope. I, that was definitely on the list of plus sides. I need to take care of myself. Side note. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. But I started realizing like, why, why am I going to waste energy on these type of people? I need yeah. to start honing down on who loves me for who I am, who loves my kids for who they are. Um, things like that. And realizing that also, I don't have the energy to worry about certain things that are just silly. Like mm -hmm. if you sit there and someone, someone cuts you off and you're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you can worry about that and like be all pissy or you can realize that in five years, is this going to bother you? No. Exactly. Then why are you wasting energy on it now? Why are mm -hmm. you wasting that precious, precious energy on something negative when you could use that towards something impactful and wonderful that's a part of your day? So you mm -hmm. need to start and it's a choice. thinking about those things, being more intentional about your energy and who you let in your life um, so that you can have a fulfilling and wonderful life. And gosh, the people that I am friends with, it's just nothing like what I was friends with, who I was friends with before this started. The person I was was a negative person that put myself down and didn't believe in myself. And now I'm, I am a different person and I have to work at it every single day. Yes. But I learned to love myself and, and to put energy in the right things and be intentional about where you spend your time. That is just so, so important as a mother in general, like, yeah, it's the best thing we can do for our kids too. Like you, you're mm -hmm. showing them, like, I'm not going to waste my energy on being frustrated that you drew on the walls 
albeit you can go in the closet and scream for five minutes. Like it's totally fine. But <laughs> then you, you say, okay, I gave my time to do this. Now I'm going to go out and we're going to, we're going to be fine. We're yeah. not going to be stressed about this. We're going to move on with our day and have a good day because there's no point in wasting our negative energy or nope. putting ourselves in a bad place um, when it's not really going to matter. Yeah. I think that that really, like that really was a tough thing for me to, I'm thinking back because um, because I'm so, I'm a Virgo. I'm so organized. Yes, I'm a type seven, which keeps me, thank God I am because otherwise I'd probably be a raging crazy person. Like <laughs> I love order. I like things just a certain way, right? It just makes me feel calm. So yeah. being a special needs mom and having literally, cause my kids, I had three under the age of two. And so when Reese, there was a whole eight month period. I'm not kidding. Like right after he, like he was probably around three, three and a half. He got diagnosed, not until he was three and a half, like properly diagnosed. This is way back, you know, in the early 2000s. And I had to fight for that diagnosis, by the way. No one yeah. wanted to get it to me. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. We have to be warriors. Um, he, he drew, and people would freak out at this. He would take markers because I always had arts and art stuff around for my kids, always. Just wherever yeah. they wanted to do it, they, they had access to it. And people would freak out, but I let him draw in an entire room on all the walls in one room of my house, because why fight it? Like literally that's what he wanted to do more than anything. He wanted to draw on the damn walls. And I said, okay, you can draw on these walls, not on the walls in the rest of the house, but these walls. And he was like, okay, cool. And he went after it, man. Like the whole room <laughs> was covered in scribbles. I was like, you know what? We're just going to paint it when he's over yeah. this. And he was over it in about eight months and he never did it again. And I could have fought it and fought it and fought it and tried to be that, no, my house has to be perfect. Yeah. I was like, no. So I'm actually, that was one of the really big gifts for me of having so many kids at a young, like close together and having a child with special needs is that gift of, does this really matter? Like what is really important? Yeah. That's not really important, you know? And we have the power, like you said, the choice to break those generational things too. Because mm -hmm. parents would come over, my, like my parents and my husband's parents would come over and be like, what in the actual hell are you allowing this child to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my like, I got it. It's fine. I, I, does this look like I care? No, it's fine. No. Just mm -hmm. don't care about it. Yes. I think you have to you know, a lot of people look place. at you crazy, but you're just like, I mean, at the end of the day too, another big thing is like, stop worrying about what other people think. Like really, oh my God, yes. affect your, you're going to let someone else that you don't know a lot of times affect your day. Like, yeah. Do I go in the store and Tristan has meltdowns? Yeah. Yes. It does happen. Do people like, oh my gosh, my kid would never do that. I'm like, oh yep. good. You have a child with autism? No, it should. But yes. you know, like, yeah, sometimes it can be a little frustrating, but at the same time, I'm like, I will lay down with him and we'll just yeah. chill. And a lot of times I'm his safe space and he will calm yeah. down quicker and he's fine. Yeah. And you know what? Like he'll remember that I was connecting with him and I was taking care of him. And you know what? That's what matters. That's more important. I'm Absolutely. Okay with that. And if people, if I don't really care, I don't care what other people think. And that no. is a big thing. That's like mom's groups, mom's groups. They talk about, well, my kid's done this and this and all these awards. Then you look at autism mom's groups and they're like, my kid said a word today. And everybody's like yep. standing ovation, <laughs> standing up, you know, and you, we, we celebrate the little things and realize like, yes. who is a hoot about what these, like all these uh -huh. big accomplishments, like, it's amazing. These small things celebrate the small moments, ignore the fact that other people don't like want to be um, icky about it. Like just be there. Absolutely. For them. My husband but, and I always talk about that. Oh, we both remember the day we said, I love you unprompted to us. We remember when it happened. Like we don't remember when that happened with our twins. You know what I mean? Like we physically, cause he didn't speak until he was almost five. Yeah. So like, we totally remember that. And you were so right. It's like, it taught us to go, oh yeah, it's about the little things all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it really is about all that, pers that, that, that perspective. So appreciating, appreciating little things, bringing it back. And yeah, being around other autism moms was absolutely necessary for me. It was what saved me. So I'm glad that you have that too. I love it. And I, you know what, I think also it implements into our business too, because we've learned for sure. to help well, our, You're our doing girl. something really awesome too. I'm cutting you off, but like, I, I don't want to forget about it. Um, 
you when we were talking you were talking about this last year or not last year was it earlier this year because it seems like this year year is five years (laughs) I think it was this year um about you're starting an A team yes Uh, talk about that you can do it now but talk about now (laughs) (laughs) my A team is um I, a, I named it A for atypical. So if you don't know what atypical is, it's atypical versus neurotypical, which is kids with special needs, basically. Um, and I want a full team of special needs kids. I also wanted my senior team and my team to mix and do shoots together because I want to normalize people that are different. Hello. Normalize yes. the fact that, hey, there's more than just one body type, one person, one style in this world. And people need to realize that and they need to be more comfortable with these people too, because people shy away from, from people with special needs when in reality, they're the kindest, most amazing, just soul giving human beings. And if you gave them a chance, your life would be changed. So, and I want them to realize also like when my kids that age, I want them to have an opportunity like that because there's nothing like that right now. And these girls could be seeing these senior team and they're like, I want to be a part of that, but they're not going to apply because they're like, I never see anything. I don't, I don't see anyone that's like me. So that looks this, like me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. this needs to be something that's shown to the world. This is needs to be something that's more normalized. So that I was going to start at the beginning of this year, but COVID happened right when I was doing applications. Yay. So my goal <laughs> is to start it next year, depending on COVID. Um, I'm hoping that I'm crossing fingers that I can do it next year. So, I'm so excited so, about that. I'm so excited. I'm excited for it. It's going to be good. I really, I just, it's a part of my passions. I th- and as I was saying earlier, like special needs is living and changing my world. And it has taught me so many things about my business of like taking care of, of people in different ways and, and loving them. And it's all about the small things. Some people think like we have to do major things for these girls right. and these for them to notice us. But a lot of times it's the small things. Yep. It's the little things that they're like, holy crap, you care. Holy you thought crap, about that? Mm-hmm. About that? Yeah. Um, and I think hundred percent and moms has made us be- better business owners for that reason. Oh yeah, absolutely. In so many ways too. So many ways. Yes. Well, I am so glad that we had a chance to do this because I missed you. And hope, I, I know that it was super awesome for everybody watching because you are so awesome. Um, if you guys missed it, there'll be a replay in the group. And um, tell, I also post, you can post on the thread where people can find you and connect with you and all that, your Instagram, your website and stuff like that to continue seeing how amazing you are. And I can't wait to see what your business does in the next year because it's going to be amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. I love you so much. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming. And thanks guys for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good day.